All right, the ACC Atlantic for the 2022 college football season. I've got picks, I've got predictions, I've got previews, etc. cetera. Uh, let me go ahead and, and write down what we're looking at here. But Wake Forest is who we're going to start off with. Uh, the ACC, obviously, lots of turmoil as far as conference realignment and whatnot is concerned, but they don't have to worry about that right now. They have a season coming up. Fall camp does begin in uh, about a month or so. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it along with uh, with my predictions for the season for these schools. We'll start off with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And Wake Forest, uh, really good season last year. I mean, good gracious. This bunch it went 11-3 and three, uh, for Dave Clawson, went 7-1 and one in the conference uh, before the conference uh, championship game. Their postgame win expectancy was very surprising to me. If you take all the stats in each of these games and you put a percentage of whether or not they would have won the game, 7.45 and 5.55 for this. Now, that obviously includes the ACC championship game, which they were not in uh, basically pretty early in that game. But only 7.5 wins on the season and 5.5 and and losses is a little, a little bit surprising to me. Um, I think... I, I'm not sure what to think of this, honestly. It's it's just a little bit surprising when you look at the fact that they had 11 wins and they ended up 7.45 uh, post-game win expectancy wins. That's that's just strange to me. They do have a lot of returning production, 34%. Uh, sorry, sorry, 72%. It's number 34 in the country. The offense brings back the majority. They are number 20 in returning production. And, the I mean, this was a... Big, dramatic difference between offense and defense for this team. Number 16 in offensive PPA per drive. Number 94 in PPA per drive on defense. And for those that want to know what that means, that's predicted points added per drive. It's uh, an analytic metric. So um, you look at this, basically Wake Forest could not stop the run. They were number 119 in defensive rushing success rate allowed. Uh, Let's look at the offense here. Offense is going to be great with the quarterback, Sam Hartman. Um... Wide receiver A.T. Perry is back. The wide receiver Donovan Green, who was injured last year, four offensive line starters are back. This offense under Dave Clawson, regardless of returning talent, is always going to be pretty good. With this much returning talent and with that quarterback that understands that RPO system, they're going to be good. They're going to be really good. Now, I would say that they need to improve their rushing success rate, but last year they didn't really need it. You know, they were number 65 in rushing success rate. Okay. This team was number four in points per scoring opportunity. They were uh, number 19 in scoring opportunities. That's drives that you have a first down inside the opponent's 40-yard line. Now, it's not red zone numbers and whatnot, but this is is a peak offense. They were able to get onto the opponent's side of the field with a first down and a chance to score often, and they did it often. Number four in points per scoring opportunity. That is really good quality possessions. Now, the bad side is the defense. Right? Defense, again, number 94 in PPA per drive. They were they were not great. And they obviously knew that, right? New de, uh, The new defensive coordinator here is Brad Lambert. He flipped Purdue's defense around in just one season. Uh, Purdue's defense was really, really good last year. We'll talk about them once we get to the Big Ten, of course. At Wake's PPA margin, number 64, even with the number 16 PPA per drive offense, it tells you that this team was... Was not good. 64 for a PPA uh, margin is not great, especially when you are as re- as good as they are on offense. So, at this, I mean, they, they lose their leading tackler, uh, Masterson. They lose three defensive linemen. They lose three defensive backs. Look, the new defense coordinator, Lambert, has good pieces to work with. Defensive end, uh, Bothroyd, and the linebacker, Sminda. Uh, the rest of the defense looks to be filled with underclassmen. But again, if the defense was not good last year, does it really hurt you all that bad when you lose some of those guys? I would venture to say no. I don't think it hurts that much. So when you look at the keys to the season for this, uh, they are projected favorites in, let's see, they're projected favorites in eight games here. And I think that that's, you know, that's reasonable, especially considering that their post-game win expectancy last year was... Uh, 
out of those 13 games. Like, they they just won a lot of games that statistically they likely wouldn't always win. So, uh, also on this, um, injuries always seem to be an issue because of uh, depth issues. Like, can the young guys develop quickly enough to help them late in the season? You've got some studs around here. I think they're going to be okay. But again, you got to develop. And Dave Clawson's done it year after year after year. Their roster is never anything to write home about. And yet this year, you know, the number 40 strength, uh, or team strength in all of the country, that's pretty good for what they usually are. Uh, with the schedule like Clemson, Florida State, Army, Louisville, NC State, UNC, Syracuse, uh, the rushing defense has got to improve this year. Again, number 119 in success rate allowed. That's a key to the season. Uh, Wake Forest, again, this is something else that I haven't talked about a whole lot. But with these guys, it could be very important. They were lucky to have the second most accurate kicker in NCAA history. 89.9% for Nick Skiba, but he is gone. Uh, will Matt Dennis be good immediately? Like This is one of those guys, again, points per scoring opportunity. When you get down there and you can't get a first down, you have to be able to chalk up those three points. Is the new guy going to be that good? Uh, my My record here... I went back and forth on this. I had them eight and four. I'm I'm gonna go with nine and three on this. Uh, I've got losses to Clemson, NC State, and Syracuse, but I could see them losing to Louisville. I could see them losing to North Carolina. I I want them to be good. I could I could see them losing to uh, Florida State on the road as well. This is gonna be an interesting team to watch because we we always see this with. With Wake Forest, teams that are not as talented as some of the other teams that they are playing on their schedule, I want to know what Wake Forest's defense looks like because that cost them a couple of games last year. I want to see uh, if the offense continues at the same pace that they did last year. Even with all the returning production that they've got, again, 79% on offense. At the quarterback's coming back. they got four offensive linemen back. they got guys that really understand the system and know how to run it. The schedule's tricky. Like, really, really tricky. So, I'm I'm curious. I mean, they won some games, you know, late last year. Uh, late game heroic kind of stuff. Do they keep doing that with these experienced guys like the quarterback, Sam Hartman? That's what I want to know. With that, we'll move on to the NC State Wolfpack. And NC State, uh, really good last year. But had to deal with injuries. And, obviously, you hate that. But... This is a uh, this is a fun team. This is a fun team for sure. Uh, they lose Ikemi Kwanu, uh, Zonovan Knight, the running back, Emeka Imizi, the wide receiver, uh, defensive end Daniel Joseph, running back Ricky Person, uh, Junior. Uh, they they lose some big time guys, and yet seventy nine percent returning production. That's number eleven in the country on defense. It's number eight. They bring back eighty five percent of their production on defense. It's fantastic. Uh, this team. <laughs> there were ways that they beat themselves a lot last year. Uh, penalties per game is a big one, number 120 in that regard. But this is a really, really strong roster, especially on defense. Number four roster strength uh, by the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. They went 9-3 and three last year. Post-game win expectancy said that they were closer to an 8-win team, like 8-4 and four, as opposed to 9 wins. But, you know, we'll uh, we'll get into it. Let's go ahead and talk about the offense. Uh, the Tim Beck's offense, it's fun. It is. It's a good time. Number 15 in explosive rate, but sometimes he makes you want to pull your hair out. The offense was explosive, but not exactly efficient. In 2021, they were number 28 in points per game, but number 85 in overall success rate. You need consistency if you're going to win the ACC. They they have not done that. They want to be able to get there. You need consistency. And... You want the explosiveness, right? Explosiveness is a big part of today's game, but you got to be efficient with it. You got to you got to keep doing it. Quarterback Devin Leary returns. A lot of people are very high on him as far as NFL grades, etc. I'm interested. I'm very curious what he's going to be like this year. They got four starting offensive linemen back, wide receiver Thayer Thomas. They do lose the left tackle. They lose the running back. They lose a wide receiver. I mean, all kinds of different things. You got to have new guys step up in those key spots. But again. Lot of returning production. They got seventy three percent coming back here. I want to know a lot of different things, really, uh, with this team. 
on defense, uh, Tony Gibson is back. And I think that Tony Gibson, I mean, with 85% back, this is the most stacked linebacker room in all of FBS. Uh, the linebackers, Thomas Wilson and Moore, are all incredible. On top of that, Moore or Wilson, are they going to have issues after their injuries last year? Defense line has got Durden and Jackson back as well. Like, this unit is stacked, absolutely stacked. They were number 11 in PPA per drive last year, number 6 in rushing success rate allowed, number 5 in passing success rate allowed. The other side is number 106 in explosive play rate allowed. Now, part of that is because they didn't allow, like, a ton of plays. But, I mean, the secondary, like, full of seniors, a uh, bunch of depth. Like, this this is a top-five defense in the country this year. Like, Dave Doran has really, really got a good defense lined up. They're projected favorites in nine games. Uh, seven of them are toss-ups. That's games that are projected within uh, one score, like, within eight points. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm curious because it's a lot of toss-ups here. Let's look at the keys to the season. Efficiency on offense is the name of the game. Uh, you got to find a way to avoid third and long as often as they did last season. You got to cut down on the penalties. Number 120 in penalties per game. I mentioned that earlier. Defense is good enough to win a bunch of games if they don't beat themselves. And another key the defense is special. Uh, Georgia did it with defense last year. NC State could certainly win the ACC for the first time since 1979 by just leaning on the defense and not beating themselves on offense. I, I really like this team. I've got them at 9-3. and three. I've got a loss at Clemson. I've got a loss at Louisville, a loss at North Carolina. I could totally see this team winning 10 games. But at the same time, I've thought that about Dave Dorn teams in the past. And in the past, it has bitten me because sometimes they do beat themselves. I would love for it not to happen. But I've got them at 9-3. and three. I think this team's really, really good. They went 9-3 and three last year. They should be able to repeat that. That's the way that I would lean on that one. All right, let's jump into uh, the next one on the board. The Clemson Tigers. Dabo Sweeney last year was obviously a bit of a disappointment. And when you look at Clemson 10-3, and three, I mean, not great. Their postgame win expectancy is the thing that really surprised me. You go based on the numbers last year, and this team was closer to an 8-win team as opposed to a 10-win team. 7.73 and 4.27 is their post-game win expectancy record. That's it's seven and a half wins. This team was not good last year, and obviously they had a bunch of injury issues, etc. The biggest issue, of course, was on offense. Number 111 in PPA per drive in that spot. Returning production is number 35 in the country, 72%. Uh, they're bringing back a ton on offense, and that, of course, was the weak link last year. So that's obviously a little bit tricky. 79% of the offense comes back, 64% of the defense comes back. But the biggest losses here are obviously at the coordinator positions. Tony Elliott leaves the offense to head over to Virginia, and uh, Venables leaves the defense to head over to Oklahoma. And then they hired from within. So maybe there's continuity there. Brandon Streeter, of course, the new offensive coordinator. The roster strength is obviously really, really good. But this is going to be tricky. Last year, number 45 in PPA margin. That's not good. Now, net points per drive, that's pretty good. Number 31, okay, this is not what you expect from Clemson, though. Uh, again, Brandon Streeter, the new offensive coordinator, let's talk about the offense here. Uh, we still haven't really figured out what happened to DJ Uyangalele, the quarterback here. It, he had 56% completions, nine touchdowns to 10 interceptions, number 107 passing success rate last year, and he didn't really impact in the run game either. Was he completely overwhelmed by Georgia and just lost all of his confidence? Or was he just not as good as we assumed he would be? Like, is it something that happened early in the season that he wasn't able to get out of? Because he looked so much better in his freshman season. We still don't know what's going on with that. It, as far as the wide receiver position, there's very little versatility there. Uh, Ingata should be a leader for that unit. The offensive line should be strong, but they weren't in 2021. Uh there's no hand, There's no transfer help, and they hired internally. I, I want to see what this looks like. What is this something that's going to end up costing them? They do have the running back, Will Shipley, and he is awesome. I mean, he's every bit what you assumed. The other part of this is DJ, we all assume, will be the starter. But does Cade Klubnik come in and take the job? We've seen Dabo let freshmen come in and take over jobs in the past. If DJ is not up to snuff... 
Uh, you look at the schedule, it starts out great. But once you get to at Wake Forest, NC State, at Boston College, at Florida State, who's the quarterback at that position, right? Um, let's look at the defense here. And this team, by the way, projected favorite in every single game, which, of course, they are. I mean, they, we, we all knew that. In uh, On the defense, play caller is Wes Goodwin. He was Venable's guy. He was uh, an assistant safeties coach. Mickey Kahn is the co-defensive coordinator, but I believe the play caller is going to be uh, Wes Goodwin. Defense is the only way that this team got to 10 wins last year. Uh, two of the losses that they had were only by a touchdown. So this team was not far off because the defense was awesome. Number seven in PPA per drive defense, number two in points per play. Uh, the entire defensive line comes back. They've only got one starting linebacker back, and none of their backups had more than 183 snaps. Uh, very few of them had even close to that. They lost three starting defensive backs. Four guys that are coming back had 334-plus snaps, and four more had over 128. So they've got experience back there, and Dabo is known for this. Anytime that you can blow out somebody, you do that early, you get in the young players, you let them get game time experience, etc., where they are actually under fire. Let's look at the keys to the season. Um, absolutely have to figure out this quarterback situation. If you want to compete in a big way, if you want to compete for a playoff appearance, you got to hope guys like uh, uh, Brzee and Shipley stay healthy. That's a big thing. I, I mentioned earlier injuries hurt them last year. Both of those guys were out at some point last year. The offense cannot be that bad again. Cannot be that bad again. On defense, it's as easy as just handing it over to Venable's understudy. I find that hard to believe, but maybe so. We've seen young guys come in and be very, very successful in the past. Expectations on that ball, sky high for a first-timer. Um, they're going to rely on you because the offense was not great last year. The only saving grace was that defense. So you got a first-time coordinator coming in, calling plays, trying to figure this out. It's going to be tricky. Uh, what does the new era look like, right? They only took in two transfers. Uh, one of them is a guy that had already been there. Another is a D2 kid. There's a lot of questions around this program this is the beginning of that. We start to get answers for this as soon as August gets here. That first game is in September, September 5th on a Monday night at Georgia Tech. We start to see what this really looks like. Was Dabo just a product of some really good coordinators over the years? Or were those coordinators a product of Dabo's culture? And basically, you can throw in anybody there. I would expect him to know better than me, obviously. this is. I think it's fair to question basically everything at this point with any program. So I'm going to question a little bit. I've got them at 10 and two on the season. Uh, their win total is 10 and a half. Uh, now to go over that 10 and a half is plus odds, plus 105. Uh, to win the conference, they are a minus 140 favorite. Uh, to win the division here in the ACC Atlantic, they are minus 250. So this is obviously your hands-on favorite. I've got them losing at Boston College and I've got them losing to Miami. Uh, now, would it shock me if they lose to NC State? No. Would it shock me if Clemson loses at Wake Forest? Actually, yeah, kind of. Um, a loss to Louisville, a loss at Notre Dame, a loss to South Carolina. Like uh, Nothing is off the table for me this season, but I think there is enough talent and enough continuity. Um, I, I believe that 10-2 and two would be a pretty good year for this bunch. That's the way that I'm going to go on this. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. But 10-2 and two looks pretty good. Uh, winning the ACC Atlantic, I think, would be pretty good here. I I think this is a good year for Clemson. So 10-2, and two, not crazy, but not exactly playoff worthy either. All right, let's go ahead and hit some other ads, and then we'll hit the back four on the back end. Let's take a break from the show for just a minute to give you some info on things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter, at Winning Cures, or you can follow the guys at GaryWCE and at Chris B. Giannini, or you can also follow us on Facebook. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit BetUSTV.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show, and from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. Got your own podcast or web show, looking to start one, or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. If you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. 
you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. The Louisville Cardinals are next on the docket here. And Louisville, last year, uh, not great. Six and seven, they lost their bowl game. Scott Satterfield, of course, going into what appears to be a hot seat kind of season. Obviously, recruiting is changing that because they have hit on some big-time recruits heading into the 2023 season. But for now, those guys ain't coming in to help this bunch. What they do have here is Malik Cunningham coming back. That's certainly going to help, right? This team went 6-7 and seven last year, but their post-game win expectancy was 8.74 and 3.26. So they were closer to a 9-3 and three team in the regular season as opposed to a 6-6 six and six team. They just got really unlucky on some of those one-score games. They were 2-4 and four in those. Uh, when you look at this team, you know, number 41 in PPA margin, they were number 20 PPA per drive on offense, number 89 on defense. And yeah, if you don't have a defense, obviously it's going to hurt you. Their returning production is number 29 in the country, 73% coming back. The offense brings back the majority of that at 77%. Defense, 69%. It's okay. It's number 40. Uh, the roster strength here is really, really good, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We know that this team can move the football. When you look at it, uh, the offense coordinator was split between five assistants in 2021. They did hire Notre Dame's run game coordinator, Lance Taylor, as their offensive coordinator. Uh, the quarterback, Malik Cunningham, he's he's a one-man show. He's absolutely phenomenal. If you have not watched him, you need to make sure that you do this season. There's no guarantee that he'll even see the field in the NFL, but he is a phenomenal, phenomenal college quarterback. Felt like he did everything. Uh, this team was number 20 in PPA per drive, number 25 in points per play. They were number 55 in offensive success rate, though, which is not great. They were just explosive. They were number seven in explosive rate. Uh, you got four offensive line starters back. If you can get the running game going, then you should be pretty good, and I think they've got a good chance of doing that. They brought in Tennessee transfer running back at Tyon Evans. Uh, the number 74 rushing success rate is not good enough. You can't hold on to the ball that way. Uh, a lot of their running game last year kind of revolved around Cunningham being able to do things with his feet, right? I think this season they're going to need a little bit more than that to be good. On defense, they hired Florida secondary coach Wes McGriff as their co-defense coordinator to go along with Brian Brown, who's been there since 2018. Uh, this is this team was not good on defense last year. Number 89 PPA per drive defense, number 86 rushing success rate allowed. That's not good. Uh, but the passing success rate was number 46. I mean, that's okay, okay. Uh, number 89 PPA per drive, number 82 points per play, number 101 points per scoring opportunity. They need a fresh voice. They need to get somebody in there that will convince them that they can make stops, right? That's, I think, the biggest thing here. They brought in eight defensive transfers. They brought six of them into the secondary alone. And, you know, linebacker uh, Abdullah is the leader here. Yeah, you got to look for Ashton uh, Gillett to throw uh, to grow in his second season on the defensive line along with Diaby. You got to get stops this year. I, I don't know what other way to say it. They're projected favorites in nine games but nine of the games on the schedule are toss-ups. Again, that is games that are projected to be within eight points. They went two and four in one-score games, as I mentioned before. Post-game win expectancy said that they should have been nine nine wins. Um, if you want to know what happened, I mean, just look, turnover margin, number 53. Penalties per game, number 73. You need to improve both of those. Uh, if you're not going to be super aggressive on defense, number 73 is not where you want to be as far as penalties per game. And the turnover margin, I mean, you just got to be a little bit better. You just got to, you can't beat yourself. A lot of mistakes in those games that they ended up losing very close. Uh, it's not as easy as just winning the close games. The defense has to get stops. You got to stop teams. They gave up 4.36 yards per rush last year. This number 83 in the country. They were number 61 in opponent third down percentage. That needs to be a little bit better. Uh, it has... Maybe this is not a make-or-break season for Satterfield because of the recruiting wins that they've had. He's made all the right off-season moves, but when you get on the field, if they go through the same thing that they did last year, if they're not 6-6, six and six, if they go 5-7, and seven, what is going to happen? That's what I want to know. Because I, I think that this team could be really good, 
but I worry. And obviously, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I do like Malik Cunningham, but I just, I have to wonder what the boosters will will say, what they will do if they're not winning games actually on the field, right? This team is pretty good. They're good enough to win a lot of games. Um, I mean, I've got them at eight and four. Like, their win total is six and a half. I think they're going to be better than last year. I trust Scott Satterfield as a coach. I loved what he did at App State. But I also, uh, I'm not sure because I haven't seen it really at Louisville yet. And and I want to see what he does. So, eight and four, I've got losses to Florida State, uh, Wake Forest, Clemson, and Kentucky. I've got a win over NC State in here, a win over Pitt, wins over Virginia, Boston College, uh, UCF, Syracuse, etc., it's a, a tricky schedule with a, a weird road schedule for sure. But they got six road games, so it, it could be tricky. But I, I think they can win. I think they can win eight games. I like eight and four here for uh, for Louisville. All right, we'll move on. And let me write down the time. We got three more that we want to knock out, and whew, we are already at an hour. But we're gonna keep going. We got three more. Florida State is the next one on the board, and Florida State, the Seminoles. Well. Let's just take a look. Uh, five and seven last year is not good enough for Mike Norvell and that bunch. Their post game win expectancy said that they should have been a six win team, six point oh one and five point nine nine. Uh, their projected record this year, as far as SP plus is concerned, is seven and a half wins. So anywhere from eight and four to seven and five, somewhere in between there. They are number eighteen in the country in returning production. That's seventy five percent. The defense is the biggest part of that because they are bringing back eighty percent on defense. That's number thirteen in the country. This team, as far as why they did not get to a bowl last year, it was the offense, which you normally would not expect from Mike Norvell or a Mike Norvell team, but they were number 73 in PPA per drive. Let's uh, let's take a look at you know what we've got going on here. The new offensive coordinator is Alex Atkins. He was the offensive line coach, uh, but we do know that this is Mike Norvell's offense. Kenny Dillingham, of course, on over to Oregon to take over the offense for Dan Lanning, who is their new head coach. Quarterback Jordan Travis, the last man standing after the other guys all transferred out. Uh, going 5-2 and two in his last seven starts certainly helps in 2021. But again, you look at these year-long numbers, number 73 in rushing success, number 98 in passing success, you got to be better on offense overall. Their explosive rate, pretty good, number 37 in the country. Uh, you got four starting offensive linemen returning. You brought in three transfer wide receivers, including Pittman from Oregon, uh, number 18 in points per scoring opportunity, but... But you only had uh, you were only number forty nine in number of scoring opportunities. That's drives inside the opponent's forty where you reach a first down. If if you were not going to score when you get there, I, I mean obviously it's a good thing that they were able to score. Number eighteen in points per scoring opportunity is great. They were able to finish drives. It's just getting there that was the biggest thing. They shot themselves in the foot so many times. I don't know how how often we saw second and long or third and long from this team. And that's just not a way to be successful overall. Looking at the defense, uh, Adam Fuller is doing things here. I mean, this defense was good last year. Number 30 in PPA per drive. Number 22 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, The defensive secondary was not good. Number 58 at that point. Uh, They gave up 6.47 yards per play in 2020. That was number 105 in the country. In 2021, they gave up only 5.19, which was... Number 30 in that spot. Now, remember, first season was 2020. It was the COVID year. They didn't even get a spring practice. You knew it wasn't going to uh, be good at that point. What is the defense going to look like without Johnson and Thomas? Those guys had 29 and a half tackles for loss, 18 and a half sacks. Uh, the defensive end, Jared Verse, who came over from FCS Albany, he looks like the real deal, but is he really one of those that just was hidden and he's just going to pop up and immediately be an All-American? I doubt it, but we'll see. I think he could be really good. I just, I'm just i not sure what to think of him. Uh, on top of that, you got four linebackers back with 400-plus snaps in 2021. You got four defensive backs with 521-plus snaps. That's five more that have over 200. Uh, experience is going to help this bunch improve from the number 93 passing PPA uh, defense in the country last year. They were not good against the pass. They are projected favorites in six games, seven of their games, are projected to be within eight points, uh, whether favored or underdog roles. Let's talk about keys to the season here. 
19 transfers out, 12 transfers in. This team looks a lot different than they did a year ago. The roster continues to be upgraded. That's good. They're up to number 31 as far as roster strength goes because it had taken a hit during the Willie days. Uh, they were 3-5 and five in one-score games in 2021. You can fix that by improving penalties per game, uh, number 82 in that metric, and then number 72 in turnover margin. You can see right there on the screen uh, with those there. But you can definitely improve. You Just don't beat yourself. You three and five in one score games, you should have won more than that. Bottom line. The other key to this season is Jordan Travis. Like, has he improved as a passer? That's going to be a big key as to whether or not they can really compete this year because the defense certainly looks like they are good enough. Uh, I've got this team at seven and five this year uh, to go over that six and a half win total, and they're minus 130. They're juiced at that point. But I like them at seven and five. Uh, I've got a loss to Syracuse in there, which, yeah, but I've also got a win over Florida. I've got losses in the middle of the year to Wake Forest, NC State, and Clemson. I've got a loss to LSU, but I've got them beating everybody else. That includes a win at Louisville over Boston College, Georgia Tech at Miami, uh, Louisiana, and Florida. Like, I think 7-5 and is good. This is a pretty rough schedule, but I think this is a good enough team to be able to get there. That's that's how I feel about them. So I I do like them. I think they're going to be okay. And that'll move us to... The Syracuse Orange. Last year under Dino Babers uh, actually impressed me quite a bit. They were a lot better than I anticipated them being, especially because 2020 was just a disaster. But at the same time, they had to play a lot of young guys. They had a bunch of injuries, a lot of guys that opted out, etc. They went 5-7 and last year. The postgame win expectancy record was 6.64 and 5.36, so closer to a 7-win team than a 5-win team. And they beat themselves quite a few times. The offense was not great, but it was better than it was in 2020. And they just kind of didn't even worry with passing the football. Uh, When you've got Schrader and uh, the running back, um, Sean Tucker, then both of those guys can run. Makes it easy. So, when you look at this, uh, we'll start off with the offense on this. Uh, Their returning production is number 12 in the country, by the way. And number 12 is pretty good. But at the same time, roster strength is not great. Um, I mean, this is... Roster, well, we'll get to roster strength there in a minute. Uh, the new OC is former Virginia offensive coordinator Robert Anai, and he brought his quarterback coach Jason Beck with him. Uh, they, that team at Virginia was number eight in offensive SP plus in 2021. They were really good on offense. They could move the football. I don't know that he's got a quarterback here that can do the things that Brennan Armstrong can do, so that's a little bit different. Uh, and I wonder if he's going to move away from what made them successful last year. Like, this is two really good offensive minds between Dino Babers and Robert and I. We'll see. Um, They are returning 81% of their production on offense. That's number 16 in the country. Uh, Sean Tucker was the only true sign of life last year. The quarterback, Schrader, was the second leading rusher. He kept the team organized, much more so than they were under DeVito or any of those guys. Uh, Number 79 in PPA per drive. Number 93 success rate. Number 117 scoring opportunities. uh, That's drives inside the 40. Like, and I has got to find a way to make this offense efficient. Like, they were number 50 as far as explosive play rate. And it was able to get them some wins and keep them in games. But, whew, uh, I, I don't know. that. I mean, that offense was just not able to get it done last year. Just not able to get it done. The defense coordinator, Tony White, uh, student of the Rocky Long 335, of course, at San Diego State. Like, it obviously works because this defense is... The reason why they were good last year, or or somewhat good, how's that? They were competitive. The reason they were competitive is because of that defense. Uh, they were they were number thirty nine in PPA per drive, number fifteen in scoring opportunities allowed, but number one hundred six in points per scoring opportunity. So once guys got down there close to that end zone, they could not get stops. So you got to find a way to fix that. If you could if you could keep them from getting down there, then you were okay. Once they got down there, they they scored most of the time. Most of the time. So that's not good. Uh, replacing the entire starting defensive line, they do have all eight starters back in the backfield. Uh, every one of them is still an underclassman. 2023 could be really good if Babers is to survive that long. And so that means you got to get something going with the offense, obviously. Their projected favorites in four games, they got seven games where the spread is expected to be within eight points. Like after the bye week, the schedule is brutal. 
Absolutely brutal. You get done with that bye week on October 8th, you've got NC State at Clemson, Notre Dame at Pitt, Florida State at Wake Forest at Boston College. I mean, this is this is rough. And so you gotta you gotta make sure you get some wins early. And the wins early would have to be over Louisville uh and Purdue. They they've also got at UConn, Virginia, and Wagner in those first five. But man, that back half is something else. Uh the postgame win expectancy, like I said, said this team should have been closer to seven wins as opposed to five last year. But the reason that they weren't there is that turnover margin in the penalties per game. Number 95 turnover margin, number 71 penalties per game. That's going to do it to you. you got to clean that up. Uh, is it the final make or break year for Dino? That's another key this season. Roster strength is the worst in the Atlantic, but they would be fourth best in the Coastal. Uh, should they be able to compete? Like I, I think they would. I think so. Uh, the other key to the season is Gary Schrader. Like, can he improve his passing? Number 117 in passing success rate. That was way too one-dimensional to cause any real damage against the uh, the ACC defensive lines. I've got them at 5-7. and seven. Like, uh, Yeah, they're projected favorites in four games. I think they can win five. Uh, and I don't know exactly where those are going to come from. I've got a win over UConn, a win over Virginia, a win over Wagner, and then I've got a win over Florida State and Wake Forest. But it could be any of the other ones. They could beat Pitt. They could beat Boston College. You know, I, there's there's ways for them to get, and they could get to a bowl game. They could beat Purdue. They could beat. They could even beat Louisville. I just I don't think it is insanely likely. Uh, so I do think that. I mean, I've got them at five and seven. I've got them missing a bowl. I think Dino gets one more year if they're competitive, because they'll see that they've got all these guys coming back. It, you got to see some kind of improvement on the offensive side with the new offense coordinator. That's what you got to see. So we'll we'll see what they end up doing there. But that one's going to be tricky. I mean, very, very tricky. Ah, that is going to move us into the last team. And, of course, we do these in order of finish from last year. And it kind of shocked me uh, that Boston College finished very, very low. I mean, last in this division last year. But, uh, but we'll start off with that. So the Boston College Eagles went 6-6 six and six last year under Jeff Halfley. And... Everybody loves Halfley, by the way. Have, have y'all noticed that? I mean, everybody just loves him. Uh, media is all over him. Uh, college administrators love him, you know, et cetera. Only went 6-6, six and six, but regardless, postgame win expectancy last year was 6.37 and 5.63. Um, they were 5-7 and seven, uh, as far as their projected SP Plus for this coming season. It, you're number 93 in returning production, so that's not good. 57%. Uh, the offense brings back the least, number 114 in that metric, only 46% coming back. But the roster strength is still pretty good, especially on offense. So we'll see what that means. The offensive PPA per drive was number 89 last year, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that uh, Phil Dracovich was out for, you know, multiple games last year, multiple times. Uh, the defense was pretty good, number 40 in PPA per drive. Let's start off with the offense, though. A new offensive coordinator, John McNulty, he was the Notre Dame t- uh, tight end coach, the former Rutgers offensive coordinator, He's going to bring some RPO changes to the offense. I'm curious how much. It just depends on on him and Halfley and what they want to do to base it around the personnel that they've actually got. They do have uh, Zay Flowers back. They do have Phil back at quarterback. Um, I mean, he missed six games due to an injury last season, and that just tanked. Uh, Grossell was the the quarterback, and they were oh, putrid on offense with him at quarterback. Uh, he will have a stable of wide receivers, like I said. Flowers is back, along with the running back, Pat Garbo the third. Um, all five offensive linemen are gone. Now, the right guard, uh, Christian Mahogany. Mahogany? I'm, I'm not sure how to say it, but he tore his ACL just a few weeks ago. He was a huge NFL draft prospect. Uh, so we'll see what happens. You've only got two returners that have 166-plus snaps on offense, but the talent still looks okay. Like they, I think it's... This is going to be interesting to see what they end up doing with McNulty at uh, offense coordinator here. As far as the defense goes, uh, Tim Lubaka or Lubaku is the defense coordinator. We know Halfley has his hands all over this defense. We don't even have to worry with that. Defense kept BC in a lot of games that they had no business being in last year. Uh, the secondary was strong, number 29, passing success rate allowed, which is very fitting for Halfley. Uh, they do return four starters on that side. Uh, as far as the defensive uh, secondary goes, uh, linebacker returns Arnold and De Palma, but not much else. Defensive line brings back six with 200 plus snaps. You got to be a little bit better against the run this year. They were number 84 in uh, in defensive rushing success rate allowed. 
That's not good. This team is projected favorites in five games. Uh, in five of the games on the schedule, they are projected to be within eight points. So you got to keep Phil Dracovich healthy. The passing offense fell apart last year with Grossell. And there are real weapons if he actually has time to throw. That's the biggest thing. Uh, the other question here, can the defense continue their improvement? The majority of the talent's on the offensive side, but the defense has certainly played better thus far in Halfley's tenure. Uh, it, this is a strange contrast. I brought it up at the beginning about how much everybody loves Jeff Halfley. Adazio got to six or seven wins basically every season when he was at BC, and Half is loved by the admins with a seven-win season or a six-win season, six-win season, whatever it is. Like, it, they're, the records are very similar. Like, how long does Halfley end up staying in this job? That's what I'm curious about. If he has another pretty good year, they get to seven wins, which is what I've got them projected to get to. Uh, I mean, their win total is six and a half, uh, juiced at plus 100 on the over. I I think they make it to seven. I think they get to seven. And if they do get there, how long does Halfley stick around? Does he take a Big Ten job? Does he take an SEC job? Like, he, he was at Ohio State as the D.C. for a long time. I wonder what he ends up doing as far as this arms race is concerned because he's got a lot of love right now from a lot of people. And if he doesn't strike while the iron is hot, you may get stuck somewhere that you don't want to be. So, very curious what he ends up doing. That is not necessarily a key to the season, but just an interesting question mark as we go along. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.